Hello and welcome to my review of the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14 Generation 8 Mark I. This is the first non-Apple laptop I have ever bought. And while I love my M1 Pro MacBook, sometimes as a software developer I just need to work with x86 servers or containers and I wanted to have a dedicated laptop just for that. The Infinity Book 14 seemed perfect and previous reviewers loved it, but they were looking at generation 6 and 7, so what about generation 8? Well, it still looks and feels really well made. I like it. But coming from a Mac, the speakers are quite a disappointment. I think the big change this year is not so much generation 8 of the Infinity Book, but generation 3 of the Tuxedo Pulse 14, which gives you an all AMD laptop for less money than the Infinity Book. Looking at online benchmarks, it seems the Infinity Book still has the better CPU, even though the APU in the Pulse is so tempting. In the end, I went with the Infinity Book specifically for Thunderbolt 4. Most importantly, I wanted to use the same Thunderbolt hub as with my Mac that lets me drive a dual cable tiled 5K display with my laptop. And I love this screen because using the same 200% scale on both my laptop and on my external screen makes things so much easier. And it works, well, at the hardware level at least. At the software level, unfortunately, it has been detected as two separate screens, meaning that maximizing a window will only make it use half of the screen. And speaking of 5K screens, my coworker's Apple Studio display worked out of the box. But the fact that it has a Thunderbolt 4 port is really the only nice thing I can say about this integrated GPU. It can handle 2D games like Nordic Ashes, which runs natively on Linux, but that's about it. Disney Speedstorm, which is a very well optimized service game that also runs on the Nintendo Switch, was not enjoyable at all. And I know, I went with the cheapest GPU option that Tuxedo has on offer for this laptop. And maybe things will be better next year with Intel's Arc graphics. But for now, seeing Sackboy struggle to hit 20 FPS on low settings made me appreciate my Steam Deck so much more. Oh right, I bought this laptop for work, almost forgot. So what that means most of the time is that I am compiling a whole lot of code, keeping all of these cores really busy. And here is where I ran into my first surprise. Because the Infinity Book was really nice and quiet, but also much slower than expected. I went into Tuxedo Control Center and my BIOS and performance mode was enabled. So why was it so slow? The answer is that this series of laptops does not perform well when it is being charged via USB-C, especially with a weak charger. Things got much better when I tried my MacBook Pro's larger USB-C charger, but I only got full performance out of it by using the included barrel charger. In my opinion, this is a major downside of this laptop. I bought it for traveling and I don't want to carry around this large brick with me. So I guess I will be working on battery most of the time. Minor complaints about the keyboard. I'm not a big fan of the specific Tux logo the Tuxedo uses on their keyboards. And I didn't want to delay my order by customizing it, so I went with the Windows key. I'm also not a fan of the full height left and right arrow keys, because your fingers cannot quite feel where they are. And I really wish the function row had keys to let me play pause and skip tracks. I am not the most careful person in the world and on day 3 of owning this beautiful laptop I had a bottle in my backpack which damaged it. Oof. So what I did is I bought this small bottle of black matte car paint and while it doesn't look perfect at least it covered the silver color coming through and in the meantime I've had to paint over another scratch so I will keep playing whack-a-mole with scratches or maybe I will just embrace the sticker hipster lifestyle. In terms of security, I don't understand why Tuxedo does not recommend full disk encryption by default. What is the use case for a Linux laptop, where you would not want its data to be safe if you lose it? But at least they do offer it. What they do not really offer is Secure Boot. There is a GitHub repository which contains the certificate for the Tuxedo kernel signing key. But the instructions for enrolling the key don't work. And if you figure out the right invocations to do make it work, then yes, you can enable Secure Boot. 
but unless you also figure out DKMS signing, then Tuxedo Control Center will not recognize your fan speeds anymore, and I think my fan behavior has also changed for the worse. And I feel like ending this video with a hot take, because I really like Flatup. I want it to succeed and I am glad that vendors like System76 and Tuxedo Computers are enabling it by default on their distributions. I mean, just look at my most used apps. I think that's a pretty normal choice of apps and they are all available on Flathub. I just wish these distributions didn't also disable SnapD because most apps on Flathub are not yet verified. So if I want to use apps from trusted sources to work with sensitive client data, unfortunately Snap is my only choice. But if you are a Linux user, chances are you will mess with the operating system anyway, so I will not waste more time on that. Neither will I go through all the components like the speakers and the camera and the microphone because they seem to perform exactly as in earlier reviews of previous generations. So all I can say is, if you need a Linux Ultrabook right now, this one is nice. But if you can wait for reviews of the Pulse 14 Generation 3 or a full refresh of the Infinity Book, then maybe do that.